So if you've looked into cloud recently, you've probably come across acronyms like this, IAAS, PAAS. Uh, sometimes deciphering the difference between cloud technologies can be tough. Uh, the word in itself, cloud, is thrown around by the media and on websites, and often it's used out of context, and so it, it can be confusing. And we're going to try to address those acronyms and what they mean in this uh, presentation. But it, you, one thing you have to acknowledge is that cloud is truly as prevalent. 93% uh, of organizations are either running in the cloud or they're testing or experimenting with cloud. Uh, one of the things that we, we do find is these three acronyms, Infrastructure as a Service, uh, which is IAAS, and then following the same naming convention, Platform as a Service, and Software as a Service. Uh, so seeing these can be a little intimidating. Sometimes you'll see a sentence that'll have two or three of these in the same sentence. What does it mean, uh, really, other than just defining the words, what's the meaning behind them? What do they each represent? Well, if you look at a standard or typical uh, IT environment, think of one like an on-premise environment. You've got a server sitting either on a floor or on a desk, uh, slid into a rack, and generally that server will be responsible for providing some sort of application or any number of applications. But that server includes everything from the application layer, which you can see at the top, all the way down through the operating system, perhaps there's virtualization installed, the st uh, storage, networking, and so forth. So infrastructure as a service takes that and removes the bottom layers. They still exist, but they're not something that the user uh, that is managing the server is responsible for. Now again, to the end user that's using an application, in any one of these three or four uh, situations, the end user still uses the application. They know no difference. But for the, the individual or department that's responsible for maintaining or managing the server, they wouldn't be responsible for virtualization, servers, storage, or networking. You can think of, of this like, for instance, if there's, let's say, a .NET application. Uh, with an infrastructure as a service environment, the, the user or department responsible for maintaining and managing it, they would have the operating system and everything installed on top of the operating system. They'd still be responsible for patches, upgrades, and so forth. Now going to the platform as a service, uh, that takes a few more layers out, the operating system, middleware, and runtime. Again, going back to the .NET application, this would be an example where instead of being responsible for installing the operating system, patching it, installing IIS, installing .NET, and so forth, in this case, the user responsible for maintaining it would just be responsible for the actual application that's deployed and, in, and the data. So going one step further, uh, this is one that, that is uh, the software as a service that is the most, really the most transparent. There's, there's zero work required on the part of maintaining this application. This is something that, uh, although most people may think they, they can't think of an example of it, anyone that's ever used Dropbox, YouTube, Instagram, any of those really popular services, it's the same principle. And really when you, when you upload a video, for instance, to YouTube, the last thing you think about is I wonder, you know, when YouTube's going to have to update their firmware or something else. That's something that the end user doesn't have to worry about. They just use the application. And everything from the application layer down to the physical storage network server level is maintained by the provider or the software as a service provider. Uh, we see that one thing that, that's hard to argue is the fact that 82% of companies have saved money by moving to the cloud. There's a really good use case for most companies moving to cloud. So how can we get involved? Well, the cloud migration assessment, uh, the first thing we do is we look at, at what you're currently spending, both on a capital expenditure or CapEx, as well as an operational or OpEx level. Uh, and then we look at the risks for your environment. Second, we'll perform a, a cost benefit, benefit analysis of migrating uh, either entire applications or just maybe a hybrid uh, migration to cloud. And we develop a plan, a migration plan, to take advantage of those benefits. So why use RAN Group? Well, the first reason is we provide uh, complete solutions for the business scenario. Um, in any consumption model that makes sense, the cloud offerings are coupled with core ERP solutions and other business technologies to create a significant and lasting impact on client success. That's important because there are many cloud solution providers that are Tier 1 certified, as RAN Group is, but there are very few that are cloud solution provider tier one certified and our Dynamics ERP partners with Microsoft. Um, and so what that allows Rand Group to do is to help use technology for business success. That's our mission statement and that's something that we can do because we have access to both the business productivity side 
as well as, as the cloud side. So a, really a turnkey solution, whether you need the ERP solutions as well as uh, other any business technologies in addition to that, Rand Group has the, the capability and the resources on staff to be able to provide that. So the next step is we encourage you to go to randgroup.com forward slash cloud. You can complete the form and begin your assessment and we look forward to working with you. Thank you.